Oh, hello everybody, and let me welcome you to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. We're up here at the water tank right now because I wanted to start by showing you. I did get the uh, bilge pump installed, and uh, I do have it in operation right now. And I want to show you how I did that. Well, here's the, uh, the burial wire that I told you I was going to use. This is the plastic rope that holds the weight of the pump. And I put it through the uh, vent cap on the top here. And I have the vent cap stuffed with uh, some um, strainer mesh so that bugs can't get in. Because I was finding bugs floating on the water and I had to use a, a swimming pool net to uh, fish them out of there. So anyway, here we are. I don't know how much we're gonna, gonna be able to show you here because of the reflections. And it's windy. I hope my wind sh windproof mic is uh, helping, but the winds are really gusting right now. So anyway, I'm going to show you as I pull this up. I don't want to drop my phone in the water, because that'll be fun. Okay, there, this is where I put the uh, waterproof epoxy on, and that's where my connections are made. Okay, so now I'm going to try to get the pump up a little higher here, and... There we go. And you can see the water is moving there. So this is uh, actually working right now and circulating water. Now the one thing that really is great is I, I've had this running now for uh, probably two hours. And uh, before when I first got here in the morning and I opened this cover, the steam the hot air moist air that came out of here it made you pull your head back you couldn't you could not put your face over this opening and right now it actually feels cool like uh, like an open air uh, swimming pool because the air's uh, the water's been circulating so it's cooling the water down actually by circulating it in the tank so it can't sit and heat up against the walls too quickly all right, so let me get the cover back on here and then we'll move on down to the pump room and I'll show you what I got down in there. And, uh, oh, did miss the, uh, there it is. Got to get this thing just right before you, you crank it down and tighten it up. All right, nice and tight. All right, warning, warning, Will Robinson, warning. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm lost in space. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're down here, and uh, here's what I got set up. Okay, there's my um, controller, and this morning it was at 14.2, and it had turned on the um, auxiliary because it had uh, reached a point of overcharging the battery, it was trying to send electricity out, but there was nothing connected to it. So now there is, and it dropped it down to 13.1 with the pump running. So it's using one volt um, to run that pump. Now the pump runs through this controller up here. And this is a digital timer. And uh, right now I've got it on manual. That's why the red light's on on top. That, uh, I'll shut that down later today and it'll be switched over to automatic. And on automatic, I got it so the timer's set so uh, it'll come on every day of the week. It'll start at 7 a.m., which is about the time that the sun would be hitting the solar panel that runs all of this stuff. So it'll start at 7 a.m. and it'll run for two hours until 9 a.m. Um, this is, I, I misspoke on the uh, original uh, video about my uh, pump. I thought my pump was a 2500 G, GPR or GPH, uh, but it is actually an 1150 or 1120 or something like that. So it'll take two hours to completely recirculate all the water that's inside of the tank. So I got it to set to run two hours on, one hour off. Um, through the whole day, starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 8 p.m. So, uh, 
for right now, that's what the uh, the timing will be. Now, when the uh, time changes here coming up at the end of the year, uh, I will have to come and reset that because the sun will be setting a lot earlier and coming up a lot later. So I want I want this thing to run basically on solar, not using the battery. The battery is just in case I have a bunch of cloudy days. The thing can still run on the cloudy days. So I keep circulating the water. All right, so these are my um, burial waterproof wires coming in. Those two of the brown ones up there are the ones that uh, um, come from the solar panel down to the controller. That's these right here. And I got the positive marked with some red shrink tubing. And the negative is, of course, just the brown. And then these two are the ones that go to the battery. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So remember, when you're hooking up controllers, you always want to hook up the battery first, solar panel second, and then when you're disconnecting it, you go in reverse. You disconnect the solar panels first, battery last. Okay, so that's all there is to it. It's, it's, it's that simple. So right now, it's uh, like I said, it's running manual, and you can hear it. Well, I don't know if you can hear that because I got my earbuds in, but uh, you can hear it actually uh, uh, circulating in there. And uh, these pipes are a lot cooler than they have been, so I like that uh, function of it. All right, so that's what I got doing in there. And we're gonna move on down to the next experiment. Oh yes, the one everybody's been waiting for. The hot water heater solar panel. I finished it yesterday morning and I moved it outside onto a couple of workhorses here. And uh, it was just sitting in the sun for maybe an hour. And then I came out and I leaned on it to block the uh, glare so I could look through the glass. And uh, this thing was at 135 degrees on the glass. Uh, it's pretty hot right now. Um, let's see what what the temperature is going on in there. And we'll just put the reading here. It's 130.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty hot. And that, that'll burn you. <laughs> if, you uh, if you lean on that glass, it will burn you. Okay, so. I filled a, a, a barrel, a 20 gallon barrel, with cold water out of the tank up there. Actually out of the blue barrels around it. And this is full, and I put this cloth on here. It's got a, a shiny coat on it. This is a, just a drop cloth. But I put this on to try to keep the water from heating up in the barrel before I start the experiment. So I've got uh, another Harbor Freight battery here. I've got my suitcase uh, solar panel here connected to keep the battery charged. And I've got my Harbor Freight 12 volt transfer pump sitting here. And it's all hooked up. And I remember the, uh, the water is gonna go in from this corner right here in this black line connected to the yellow hose. And it's gonna go start going around in a circle and get smaller and smaller as it goes. And then once it gets all the way through and, and gets through the slow down section in here, it goes out right there on that one. And that one comes out there and it's connected onto this little hose, which goes back into the top of the barrel. Now I've got the, the pickup line from the pump all the way down at the bottom of the barrel because I wanna pick up the cold water at the bottom of the barrel and put the hot water back in at the top of the barrel. Okay, so. That's the, uh, the method that I'm thinking about on how to uh, get this thing working. So on here, I set a thermometer in here, and this is one of those deep fryer thermometers. So it's saying that we're just about 95 degrees with the water inside of that barrel as it is right now. Okay, so we're gonna turn this pump on. Now I can't run this very long, especially if that water is that hot because this is not a hot water pump, and the little impeller inside of here is just a neoprene or rubber impeller. 
and if the water gets too hot it'll burn that um, pump out and then I'll be out of luck so I'm gonna just run it for a little while and see what we what kind of water temperatures we kick up okay so it is on and we're here at the thermometer I hear water circulating so it's it started going through already yep the needles already going up it's moved the thickness of the needle in just that short few seconds of running Yeah, it's already up to, it's, it just surpassed 100 degrees in water temperature. And it's climbing pretty quickly now. Yeah, it's past 110. Hundred fifteen, hundred and twenty. That's how fast it's going up. It's up to 120. When it reaches that halfway mark right there, it'll be 125. Yes, yeah, so I would say that this is a success. Now, I'm at 125 degrees, and look at this. I just blew a hole in the hose because of the heat. Woohoo! Look at that. Isn't that something? All right, so I know that I'm going to be using um, shark bite pipe, and uh, these were all just temporaries uh, on the outside of this thing. But apparently, the uh, that that hot water coming through there was coming through so hot it melted the uh, the silicone patch I had on the hose there. It it just melted it. Look at that. Oh my God, it's, it's like bubble gum. Wow, that's hot. That's like bubble gum. <laughs> oh yeah. Now there is an efficient hot water heater. Forget the extra electricity from wind and solar. This is the way to go. You want hot water in your cabin? You want to preheat the water going to your water heater? Go with something like this. Get a hot water recirculation pump mounted on your water heater so that it turns on whenever the water reaches a, a low temperature. It'll turn on, circulate water through here, bring all hot water back into your hot water heater. So the minute you turn on your faucets, you have instant hot water and you're not going to be using up um, uh, electricity or, or propane or natural gas to, to preheat your, uh, your water. Now. One thing that make note of, I'm talking about preheating water for a water heater. Now, if you have a, a tankless water heater like I have in my cabin, you cannot do that. Because if you put hot water into a tankless water heater, it'll mess with the sensors in the tankless water heater and uh, probably disable your tankless water heater down the line. Uh, they're designed to sense the cooler water coming into the unit, fire off the fire in them right away, and heat your water as you use it. So I already have instant hot water coming out of my faucets. If I, uh, if I go into my indoor shower in the cabin and I close the shower curtain, and thank you, Janice, for the uh, shower curtain. I am still using that. I never did switch over to a shower door because uh, function before beauty, right? It's working, don't fix it. So, <laughs> as long as it's working, I'm gonna have that shower curtain there. And uh, anyway, what I was saying was, I go in there and I turn the faucet on, on the shower, with the shower curtain already closed. And then I pu pull the diverter plug, 
and I have a positive vertical plug so there's no little drip coming out of the bottom spout when you turn it on. It's all the water comes out the shower head. And I, by the time I pull that little thing and just walk around the other side and step into the shower, the water is already hot. So that's how fast that hot water, instant hot water works. And I love my tankless water heater. I'm not going to exchange that for any reason right now. But for those of you who have a tank on your water heater, one of these solar panels, uh, DIY, homemade, and anybody who wants the uh, materials list and the uh, uh, instructions on how to build one, uh, leave your comment down below in the comment section. I'll be sh glad to type it all up and uh, uh, we'll make contact somehow and I'll send those instructions to you. All right. This is G-Bear thanking you for joining me. I hope I earned your subscriptions. Click on that subscribe down there. And when the little bell pops up, click on the little bell so you don't miss any of these exciting experiments. This is G-Bear signing off.